Keaton or Chaplin? Cool. <laughs> Who is uh, funnier? Who's funnier? Hmm. Who's funnier? You know, yeah. Mariah, Keaton or Chaplin? No, I'm not going to choose. I'm going to choose. I say mu, as I have said before in the Chinese tradition. That, that question does not, uh, is not worth answering. Yeah. So, welcome back to the White Room. This is Simon speaking. And hello, Mariah. Hi, Simon. Hi. We have a guest, Gonzalo. Hi, Gonzalo. Oh, hello. Hi, hello, Simon. Hello, Mariah. Before we get Hi. to... So, let's, uh, I think uh, we wanted to meet again for a new episode of this podcast. And um, what is, uh, I mean, we are in need of, uh, in these times, more and more, I feel that uh, we are in need of uh, laughing, of comedy. And uh, that's why we wanted to um, talk with Gonzalo Alarcón, who is here with us. So, Gonzalo, we already said said hello. You're of course an an, an old an old friend from from Maria and uh, from me. And um, but I want to ask you because I hopefully there is somebody listening to us also. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you please uh, introduce yourself? Who are you, and where do you live, oh, and what do you do? Yeah, I live in Brussels now, but I'm from Chile. Actually, and uh, what I do, it's um, working. There's like I'm a circus artist. You know? I'm, um, I work in the circus, more contemporary circus field, let's say. And, uh, but also, I'm um, let's say a clown and a comic actor. I like to very much physical comedy and try to, you know, to to mix things like uh, how. To mix theater and uh, and clowning and comedy, so this is mainly what I do, and, and I play very much you know, in the street street festival uh, with circus, now street theater festivals or circus festivals. And we can say that I am a I am a kind of circus actor <laughs> somehow. Do you work alone or do you have a company? Now I have um, uh, two projects. Which I'm working on, and one it's a duo. It's a, f a really physical comedy and juggling and slapstick uh, show for the streets. And the other one it's uh, from an indoor uh, performance of theater uh, with uh, five people. Also a mix of uh, magic and uh, illusion and uh, physical theater and also comedy. But they're they're both finished or. It is uh, yeah. in work in pro progress. No, no, no. They are both finished. They are, they, actually, this, the new one we did the premiere on February this year, so we were okay. What's on what? Tour, what right is there. what is the name of the two of the duo and of the ah, other? The duo. The name of the duo is Chiringuito Paradise. Chiringuito Paradise. The company, yeah. Yeah, and the company is Sitting Duck. It's a Belgian company. It's the opening of um, let's say uh, of a bar, no. Bar itinerante, how to say the nomad. An itinerant bar, yeah. Yeah, it's the big opening of this very chic and kitsch uh, bar, and where everything starts very well and it goes very bad. And, uh, and it's um, with a lot of accidents and juggling and flare juggling. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, my partner is a very good uh, flare juggling, a cocktail uh, uh, juggler, and it's a uh, a street uh, performance for everybody, no? Yeah. Adults, kids, uh, everybody. Yeah, I remember last year you toured with that performance also near us in Dortmund, but I wasn't there. I was in vacation, so I could not come. 
but I really <laughs> wanted to see that. And a colleague, actually, a colleague from us, Melanie, she went there to see you. She did not say hello because she was too shy, but <laughs> she, she went there to see you in Dortmund and made a film, a whole film for us. So she... Not just with her really? tele just with her telephone. No, not very very good film, but just to see, and it was a very very beautiful performance. Um, at mm -hmm. least what I saw with a lot of oh, action, with a lot of accidents, like real slapstick. Yeah. No, yeah. real slapstick. Yeah, it's a lot of action. Modern, modern, but also how to say ar artisan, old craft craftsman slapstick with uh, mechanical ac accidents and. Glasses, uh, 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 glasses jumping around, and the whole building falling down, and no, something between yeah. Buster Keaton and whatever else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were mm. very much inspired by them, actually. Yeah. But we didn't want to make the same. You no, know, try to also to adapt it to the street, because this is something also that you know the big difference between movies and a, a live show. Is that in movie you can make m many shots. Of the same mm. same gag of the same accident, yeah. And then you don't have people around, so you have you can choose the angle and you can really make it work and try many times. But on the street, you have only one shot, mm. uh, so it takes some time to to find out how to make it work in one in one only one shot. It took us a lot of time because we have lots of accidents, and we were very much inspired by this visual comedy actually because. The comedy from movies is, of course, physical, but it's also a visual comedy. And then you have to you know, use the space, the objects, the scenography, and everything takes part of one big shot. So the, it was a nice uh, research also also to do. What what yeah. do you mean? What is the what do you mean? You said physical comedy and visual comedy. What is the difference? Yeah, I mean physical comedy, and for me, it's when the uh, I don't know, there is also comedy, let's say, like, um, like in theater, no? when you play, I don't know, a Moliere or a comedy, that it's a, the, you, you use comedy to, to, to speak about something else somehow. No? It also is very related to the text of what you said. Hmm. Of course, it's also very physical, but in here, what we have, it's, uh, it's about physical actions. No? It's... Uh, It's, uh, where, where the actor, where the comic actor, it's involved in the real physical actions, but it's become becomes also visual when the, there's not only the actor, but then you have objects and scenography, and you move like in a movie, you know. Mm. So that's like um, it's uh, uh, it's more or less the same thing, but. Uh, I like to the idea of that you have like a kind of image, like in a movie, not something that you see. Once it becomes very visual, even even if you don't understand the language, because we did show we turn we tour uh, uh, in many, many uh, different countries, mm. you know, in Romania, in Germany, in France, in Belgium, in Italy, and we go from one place to the other. And I can speak in different languages, but at the end, what you get from the the, the show is not the text. Is the mm. visual, uh, the image of uh, uh, the actions. Huh? Now, just following a little bit associations. Later, we can catch again the red, the red thread. Um, I I saw a film uh, just some days ago. I can recommend very much to everybody, The Dreamers by Bertolucci. And uh, in this film, this film, The Dreamers, it's about um, three young people who are cinephile, cinephiles, no? They love cinema <coughs> in the 60s. Yeah. In Paris, of course, where else? <laughs> and um, they lock themselves up in a, in a flat and they are in a world of cinema. And there is one very wonderful scene where they fool around and one of them asks the other, um, or they have a discussion about Keaton and Chaplin. And so I ask you, remembering this film, Keaton or Chaplin? Whoa. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Difficult. Who is uh, funnier? Who's funnier? Hmm. Who's funnier? You know, yeah. For me, I have some periods also when I really like, uh, enjoy watching uh, 
Chaplin and sometimes I like more Keaton, but it's very difficult to compare both of them because they are like, uh, they complement very well each other. For me, they make like one thing. Yeah. Mm. So it's uh, also, yeah, Chaplin was just amazing because also you have to see the, his whole career and how his work has work has evolved since his beginnings. At the beginning, he was really on, on, on comedy, on slapstick comedy, but he could, he was able to to go further, to evolve from his work and mix it with uh, with, with humanity, with tragedy and with, uh, no. Uh, but uh, Keaton states like pure comedy till the end. Yeah? Um, and also, uh, it was very interesting at, uh, how to say, like cinematographicamente, how do you say that? Cinematographically. Yeah, because he was able to, to use this space like to, to, to feel like complete streets and neighborhoods and to make things happen. And it was very dynamic also, his, his way of making movies. And he was able to use everything and, uh, and to use also more the, the, the cinema as a tool. No? Than, than, than Chaplin did, but they were both amazing performers, amazing comic actors and physical mm. uh, actors or physical clowns. Uh, yeah, but I could say both. <laughs> some, it's not possible. You I, have to choose. <laughs> yeah, I, I like Chaplin very much. <laughs> For me, it's also an evolution, I have to say, but I will choose Keaton. For me, Buster Keaton is the much more interesting. Now, uh, with of course, before I was, I, I I love also Chaplin. I love all, all the films and all the comedy. It's 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 very very nice. And maybe the biggest and the greatest thing about Chaplin that he was so popular and he could he could uh, introduce or use his popularity and fill it with a with some very 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 good content no with very good films and good good things but buster keaton for me is just so innovative mm -hmm. what he did what he created how he exactly how he works with cinema how he builds up all the tricks how he works it's 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 just to to learn and to 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 steal now and to to from this let's say uh, um experimental Uh, point of view, I find Keaton is just incredibly more interesting. Because But I think it's yeah. it's true what Gonzalo says. It's it's you know you can't. It's like choosing between Miles Davis and uh, and Coltrane or something. It's like <laughs> to just say something maybe about where you are at the moment. What is attracting you? <laughs> so yeah. maybe you now He, have this like fascination. Mariah, Keaton or Chaplin? No, I'm not gonna choose. I'm gonna <laughs> choose. I say mu, as I have said before in the Chinese tradition. <laughs> that that question does not uh, is not worth answering. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I think only it has, as a self-portrait, maybe. Yeah, but it has to do what you said, Mariah, because it depends on also in what you are living in this moment. Because for me, Chaplin in this moment is very interesting because it's a very it's very interesting also the way he was able to add content also to comedy so to take mm -hmm. it a bit farther that's uh, and it was also i'm trying to do somehow in my work not to try to explore comedy and the possibilities of comedy not only to perform a, a comic scene but to see if i'm able to say something with it or if, can i push it a little yeah. bit harder or to mix it with some other practices or you no know, techniques and uh, and see if it's possible so in this in this case I choose uh, Chaplin because of this. He was a able to combine mm -hmm. so, styles. So we have an even. Uh, I choose Keaton, Mariah chooses Mu, and you choose Chaplin. So it's even. It's okay. Yeah. But I really, yeah. in this scene, I like also to, to, to choose. In this scene uh, from the Dreamers, uh, the one says to the other, uh, Chaplin or Keaton, and the other says, in incomparable no Keaton of course and the other says no Chaplin and the first says Keaton and he says Chaplin only cared about himself and the, and Keaton uh, produced some real art and so on so on so it's very funny 
<laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, but who would compare on the theatrical stage? Who what? I didn't get that. Who would compare on the theatrical stage? Because maybe it's coincidence, but maybe it's absolutely not coincidence that both of these huge uh, uh, artists that were able to really create a strong world around them were film actors or filmmakers, film pioneers. Does yeah. that have a... Does, is that important? Yeah, but you have to think that they have made, almost create cinema <laughs> also. They have to grow mm -hmm. together. No? They have help. They have helped each other to develop their work. Like Chaplin was maybe the first movie star ever. No? And they, it's also, I think they have seen also movies and cinema as a tool, as a way to explore also their own art. No, because they both come from comedy, from a variety, you know, from a... Mm -hmm. uh, so they come from the stage. From a stage, yeah. yeah. And I think it's very, it must be very interesting to... to, to because they have uh, realized that, uh, that cinema, that movies were, were also a possibility to develop their own art, no? to, to, to develop comedy and to use all the... Um, the possibilities that the, 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 um, the cinema gives you that you can do on stage. Yeah. Actually, yes, they come from the stage. I don't know about Keaton, but I, because I didn't yeah, see yeah, this, also. but 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 I know uh, Chaplin, of course. Chaplin came from the so-called vaudeville. And he, you can see it in the old films of Chaplin when he didn't, uh, before developing the tramp as a, as a, as a character, He plays uh, very, very, very vulgar vaudeville and very, like, plain, stupid uh, vaudeville things, no? With really, like, uh, imagine just pushing somebody from behind and so, so, it's like uh, vulgar comedy somehow, even. And it's even not really, if you see the very old films of Chaplin, it's... You say what? What? What is this? No, <laughs> and so afterwards, it's it's developing a lot. So I think this, um, of course, there's a lot of things with which helped him if he does film. The film is a is a tool uh, to get money, so to get independent also. No, so he got to get more get more popular, get more audience, and also be able then afterwards to independent um, to be independent through your own money and your own production. No, and uh, so this is a big part of this. I I don't know, but maybe from the th the the Buster Keaton setups of the of the of the um, how do you say of the stage of the film uh, set are I think are very interesting also in the theater standpoint because in fact it is theater. Uh, just it's cut into little scenes. No, but they, they, it's not, there is no trick about it. It's all, it's all life. I mean, they do, he does his stunts and all his, his constructions, or if a building falls down or if he uh, falls from the third mm. floor, it's all rehearsed and it's all made, filmed, of course, but it's real. So you can also, uh, you can imagine it on a stage also, no? So this is why, why when we come and back. This is interesting. That's interesting. I mean, I would. I'm really curious, so Gonzalo, if you agree with that. Uh, that the work of Buster Keaton could just, uh, you know, inform theatre work like that, or even be transposed, that it would work in the same way on a theatre stage. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 and it does, it does, and you know, this is very interesting. It's a very interesting thing because a lot of people, they, I don't think that even they don't know especially in circus and in contemporary circus, where the work comes from and how close it is to the work of uh, people like Chaplin or Keaton or this low comedy or vulgar com comedy, as you said, Simon, because, because we're still very close to them in circus. And it's, even if this, you know, these new forms of, uh, mm. of circus, especially with this very physical and very visual and everything, it's like... Uh, um, It has to do with the exploit, no? With the spectacular spectacularity of a, uh, of uh, of every action you do, no? Like uh, fallings or juggling or, or amazing the people, the audience, and uh, and it works. And I think they have somehow uh, 
create, uh, let's say that, um, I don't know how to call it, a style or a way of doing a comedy, but it, uh, it's very much used by, uh, by artists in our days, I think, for visual artists. Then you have to also think that Chaplin, he also inspired that big movement also of artists during the avant-garde uh, period and uh, painters and, uh, you know, like different kind of artists. So I think that this way of using and uh, mixing uh, physicality and visual in, in their case, in comedy, now it has uh, created a lot of possibilities, and we're still uh, exploring those possibilities related to the image and to the actions, and uh, you know, to this lo low comedy uh, uh, body feel and the mix of everything. Because for me, they really are like a melting pot of different mel melting pot. How do you say when you mix put puri? You now, when you mix a lot of things together, and uh, this is what inspires me more of their work, yeah? more than just the gags or how to create or write gags, but how to explore different possibilities through comedy. We see Chaplin or Keaton in these old movies like something old, uh, like, you know, uh, mm. it's not big, but for me, it's not only about watching them and, uh, and having fun watching their movies, but also a way to let's say I have to read their movies, I have to try to find out how, the, how it works, because when, for example, if you, wanna, if you try to find any kind of dramaturgy on this kind of comedy, on physical comedy or visual comedy or books or anything, there is almost nothing about. Right. The only way to learn about this is to not to watch these movies, but to try to read them. I don't know how to say, like to, 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 to try to find out Mm. what it is in there, try to understand their work, not only to see these movies to, to, to have fun. It can be funny, but I don't think if I really laugh on those movies, I, 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 I really am really interested in seeing how it works, all the dy dynamics and... The, Maybe and how. you look like mm. Buster Keaton when you look at these movies. Sorry? You look like Buster Keaton when you see these movies. In which way? You look uh, like... You look like Buster Keaton when you see these movies. I think in English that doesn't really work, Simon. <laughs> you, you you mean you, you watch the movie as if you were No, Buster you Keaton. look your face looks uh, like Buster your Keaton's face. face. Looks, ah. <laughs> when you yeah. watch the oh. movies. Your face <laughs> looks okay. like Buster Keaton's face when you watch that movie. Yeah. Wow. Not 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 always, because some of the movies are are, are, are funny, but some others they're not just uh, really funny, but they're very interested in many other things. You now, there's things that I can use also, uh, or get be inspired by. Yeah, something that I like very much of the, their movies that the actions are real. Yeah, especially Buster Keaton, all the stunts, all the things he does. So you can't just copy him or imitate him because then you, know, you have to be able to to make also these uh, stunts and uh, and physical things, but. It's uh, very. It's more like how to build up a story or try to tell something or how to add content to comedy or or no, because it's interesting to see what it was at the beginning, especially with Chaplin, as you said, this vulgar comedy with full of kicks and uh, claps and uh, like uh, cheap accidents and uh, you know, but. Little by little, he start adding a content to that work, and uh, and it's something that also when you do this, it's something that also you ask to yourself, what what can I do with all this? How can I use it some mm -hmm. in another way? Yeah? So just to to see yeah. how they have already do, already done this before. So in this way, yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful question, actually. So you have all this ability and all this uh, um, structure and and craft, and then what does it carry? What can it carry uh, other than itself? I think that's a wonderful uh, uh, deepening. Yeah, it, yeah. Also, because you know, in comedy, nobody can really teach you how, how, how to do the things. You can learn from people, of course, 
and you can uh, maybe read a book, but I don't know if it's books are very, uh, very useful to learn how, how to make a gag works. Or the only thing that you have to do is to go in front of the audience and to try it by yourself. No? Mm. So this, uh, uh, it's interesting somehow to just to be inspired by something, but then you, you have to do your own thing. Very jazzy. Yeah, yeah. It's like when you listen to some musicians. Now you are not, mm -hmm. you don't listen to Miles Davis or Coltrane to play Miles Davis and Coltrane, but you know. Yeah. To actually, why? Why do you listen to Coltrane and Miles Davis again and again? Or let's see, let's say, why do you see Keaton or Chaplin's films again and again? What do you? I mean, you're not going to copy them. But you're trying to learn something. But what is it that you can learn? What What do you learn? Mm -hmm. ah, a good question. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah, a good question. It's uh, you know something that I really uh, like on their movies. It's about precision and how serious it can be to make a comedy. You know, how much work it needs and how much you have to sometimes people don't can can't even imagine how, that you have to think about how to play a gag or how to fall. It's not just to throw yourself against the through the window or I don't know. It's but it's just to in especially in Keaton, it's like um uh, a ballet of uh, actions and they are so well organized that they create the illusion of chaos, no chaos, mm. chaos. Mm. But it's not chaotic at all, it's very well organized. Uh, but at the same time, they really makes you believe that things are going wrong, but it's, uh, it's the paradox of a slapstick comedy. No? The accidents are so well calculated that they are far of being accidents, accidentally. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's this is the thing that I I really like of, uh, on on mm. the work actually. I might come from circus. Am I also a juggler? I'm a juggler, so I like I can see also my own techniques. How they have how they can use this uh, way of manipulate objects of uh, of calculate calculate a good throwing of a bottle and catch it at uh, the right moment and no like it's so, so like jazz it's like music yeah, and the rhythm is, they, yeah. the urgency on every action and every move mm -hmm. so everything and the feeling like, when uh, you know it's good when you know the timing is right that's some incredibly satisfying feeling no it feels yeah feels right yeah you know and and it's nice to do it But it's sometimes it's nice also to watch it when somebody can do this like almost yeah. perfectly. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Mariah, go. Well, I just wanted to re, uh, because you asked the question. So why do we watch it again and again? And uh, and there was a silence because we were all like, "Oh wow, that's a really good question." And then I thought, um, "What's very." interesting about that question is that it asks us to define okay so what do we find in there and after this silence I thought no wait it is again just the opposite like you know Buster Keaton or Charlie Chaplin no it's what you you always learn what you are ready to learn you meet the work at your own edge so you can do the same exercise your whole life and every time you meet it where you can meet it so a different edge and is i think very much the same with a rich work of art or a rich artist like Miles davis or or the sebastian keaton or charlie chaplin it's so rich that you can meet their work again and again on a different edge of yourself so y it it's it gives this opportunity for us to be in the presence of these masters These recordings, they're so precious because we can be in the presence of Chaplin, in the presence of Miles Davis all our life and meet them again and again on a new edge of ourselves. And I think that's a, a, 
that's an amazing gift of that recording has has given us and film and uh yeah i think also i think maybe one part of it is like to have a to develop a certain desire you you said uh, you talked about precision gonzalo so maybe you can also say watching these films over and over again produces in 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 you a, a kind of a desire for 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 your own work for your own precise work to repu reproduce something of your own but which has a has a similar quality which has something which has um Mm, which is not the same, but which um, which is worth of <laughs> of of standing in the tradition of this. So let's say no. So it's 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 um, a kind of a different kind of connection that you build with these masters. Let's say with the examples that they left us. Hmm. And every time again, new, because now you are fascinated with this, but then maybe in five years. You will be fascinated with another aspect of the work. Yeah. And then I think it's also a process of assimilation. So you, you get used to a certain, not a, it's not, again, not an aesthetics. I mean, there are people maybe that then afterwards copy or try to copy and of course fail. But you can also watching over and over and then of course trying out, you can assimilate maybe some kind of let's not call them principles, but somewhat as principles, which maybe connect jazz and comedy, which has a certain, which connect dramaturgy and rhythm. And you have certain things that you, you maybe tastes, not tastes and not recipes, but somehow an intuition. Maybe you develop an intuition for, for uh, in your craft, for, for dealing with dramaturgy and dealing with gags, but uh, certainly not in that way that you see these films of Buster Keaton and then you say, aha, every gag has to be written like this, no? Because then I think it would not work. But somehow you learn, no? Also, you learn something, but it's not a technique that you can say now, the gag has to be 50 seconds long and certain kind of expectation should be there and then it should be broken uh, or you can make it three times and then the third time it's broken the expectation or whatever uh, but it's uh, so if you if you apply but this these forms are yeah. i think they're, they're also interesting actually they're, they're also things you learn these forms like like in jazz for instance the form of the the tag like the ending you play three times and then but they have a different kind of a uh a, they are like uh, the culture, the rules of the game that is developing. And they're not God-given, but they are like, okay, we agree, this works. And then you can stand... If you don't know those rules... Yeah, yeah, you cannot refer to them. You cannot... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, you cannot that, play, no? Yeah, yeah, you cannot play. We could, we could maybe also call them cliches, but cliche not, not in a bad sense. Cliche in a, in a sense of something that just works. Um, and you have to deal with it somehow. So you have to know it and develop your intuition in 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 contact with that, no? Hmm. And deal with this. So this this classical question, you raise up a situ, you you construct a situation and you repeat, no? The question of repetition in comedy. So let's say uh, a clown tries to to juggle and he fails first time he fails the second time and the third time something must happen no something different must happen some surprise so this is maybe one one cliche which you can use and it will work but then you can also you can go fa further with it um yeah especially because in comedy you can't really copy or you can do, you can follow any rules, b rule because they are not re rules. It's a lot about feeling, and if you try to, if you take notes on the on the Chaplin's or Keaton works and try to do it in the right way, you will get lost. You will be you will be lost very very fast because the thing is that you really have to find your own thing. You really have to have fun. You to enjoy at, on your own way of. Uh, of uh, doing uh, this comedy, 
you can't really copy you know as you said like an, to be focused on the statics on a or how Chaplin works, or Keaton face, or these kind of things. Of course, you can try to do it, but it will not be yours. So it will not be interesting for you, and you will have nothing to share at some point. So it's uh, it's very interesting to to see that you can be inspired by the things. But maybe it's not about when I talk about precision. It's not about there's uh, something very specific, but it's a lot about also the feeling of the universe that they they create, mm. you know, the whole mm. picture, not only the small details. So it's uh, how we can be inspired by this, but at the end you have to be your own master. You have to learn by yourself. You can be inspired by a lot of people. You can be inspired by a lot of artists. You can also have had good teachers or master or whatever, but at the end, when you will be in front mm -hmm. of the audience, uh, they will not laugh if you explain things. You have mm -hmm. to be there and you have to find this uh, fragility, or not this uh, humanity or, uh, of what you do and not just being the copy of the copy because it will, it's not interesting at, in comedy. I think same for jazz. It's like a, so totally true. You need to find your own groove, you know, your, the, your own flow, your own thing. Mm -hmm. You have to to, to surf the wave at every every three th seconds, you know, you just be, you can't be focused on, on somebody else's work and try to do it as good as possible because it's not interesting. Mm. And uh, of course, it's interesting to know the rules, but not to not respect them. No? Yeah. So, yeah. This is the main thing for me. More you know how it works more you can really break the rules and enjoying uh, breaking these rules and trying to find something that you like. Maybe there's, there's also the image of, uh, I don't know, it's, you tell me, Gonzalo, if this <laughs> speaks to you, you know, that there's, a, there's forces like gravity and you just have to deal with gravity, but you don't have to be a slave to gravity. Like it's not, it's not the thing that you're, but you have to take it into into account. No, you can't you can't ignore it in the same way that you don't have to be a slave to those rules that you understand and you understand their like workings and everything. But then you have to dance with them. You have to dance with gravity too. Anyways, it's maybe <laughs> not such a good example, but I just, it just made me think of you know these things that you that you understand are there. And you work with them, but you you're not like uh, fixated on I them. I find that very interesting. Right. We should maybe yes, we should go into a little bit more deeper into the anatomy of the joke, let's say, of the of the funniness. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Because if you say gravity, I think that okay, what is what is funny? What is the phenomenon of of being funny and of comedy? is of course a very, very, um, very direct communication. It has to do with some sort of communication with a spectator. That also can be you yourself, no? You can also be your... Also with gravity, actually. With yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, falling, I'm, I'm going... Falling I'm, and... I'm, I'm, okay. I'm coming, I'm coming to... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So it's a, it's somehow it's a, it's 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 of course it's communication, direct communication, and mm -hmm. and you can say maybe it is a form of communication. Um, you as as the as the as the performer, you create. It can also be in music. You create a certain kind of uh, let's say a, a time. It has a beginning and an end, and inside of this is, of this time are these points of gravity. No, we could call it the. The, the gag or the the uh, the punchline maybe yeah the yeah. punchline where the of course the 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 urge to laugh where the laughter breaks out no so this is the point of gravity where it just releases where it booms where it bounces no and then it goes up again <clears throat> and it goes up again and this is a kind of an attention which goes up and an expectation which builds up and then it gets released with the punchline. Yeah, mm. can we maybe we can we can see this as a kind of um, the solar system of the <laughs> of the yeah. comic the physics, of the physics, the physics of yeah the physics of the comic performance. 
So uh, we are looking for the singularity. <laughs> yeah, again, um, and um, of course, there is the question of of rhythm is coming very, very, very uh, strongly because I, I remember last time that we met in uh, in our in our internal workshop, in an internal work meeting, we were speaking about rhythm and speaking about uh, rhythm as gravity. So as different points mm -hmm. where you it falls back again and then oh, yeah, it, it's, yeah, remember, or maybe yeah. or maybe rhythm as a swing, you know, as a swing in yeah, circles. Yeah, no, as a point. I, I remember it was like the beat is a is a center of gravity. The beat as a center of gravity, yeah. which can yeah. be, which can be, yeah. you can fall into it. You, you naturally you fall into it. Yeah, you fall yeah. into it naturally. Yeah. One, two, three, four. One, two. You fall naturally into it. It's, a, but then of course the art begins when you when you work around it and when you create the tension and the tension, tension yeah. comes from resisting this center of gravity no from resisting the beat there the tension is created and this is created and this tension creates the attention um, of the spectator and in the comedy this this beat the center of gravity is is somehow this release this laughter release no through the punchline so yeah, how to how to deal with all this? <laughs> <laughs> Gonzalo, can you can yeah. you do something with that? Yeah, or does it uh, not because be you, be yeah because you have said a few things actually no not only one thing when you were on what you said about comedy first something very interesting that you just said is that the problem in comedy can redefine no the solution so let's say can redefine the problem. No, it's something that you just said, like sometimes you have, like you can see a clown with a very, who presents a very simple and easy problem with a very easy s solution that everybody would know the solution, but somehow he will not understand. No? <laughs> and then he will come out with another solution. I did, and now I'm, it's something very interesting that happened with the video also that you uh, sent me you will maybe check it later but it's the with an unexpected solution to a problem so what? it's like Unex you are, unexpected solution to a problem yeah mm. yeah mm. so the problem you will recognize a problem very simple how to sit on a chair how to know uh, anything or how to open a, something i don't know how, but then the audience will recognize this problem as something very simple and easy to solve but somehow, now this character or this clown will not understand, but he will come out with this unexpected solution. So mm -hmm. this unexpected solution maybe is worse than the problem, but will redefine the problem and will also redefine in a different way the relationship with the audience. Mm. Yeah. And this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Problem is also a very good description because one of the, one of the, key uh, one of the biggest problems for us as performers is of course to to play with the expectation of the spectator and to yeah. surprise because yeah. it's so easy it's it's so easy to predict um you can check it yourself uh, in any serious in any bad serious of television mm. you can predict what's going to happen next and in also uh, in bad acting and in bad uh, performances uh, you can uh, you can predict what happens next it's it comes down maybe maybe it comes also down for to every single action no if you start an action like i'm grabbing the glass it's full of water or of wine, better wine, and I'm going to take it up. And of course, the next thing what you expect as an audience is that I am going to drink it. Yeah. So how are every? This is how 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 we work. How how our brain works. Our brain always thinks or ahead of 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 what is going on. Already tries to construct what is going to happen next, and. Um, this is this comes down to to every single action so if you start in one direction you can of course 
end in the different direction and the line is one line that can yeah it uh, um it uh, if you start to hold uh, to take up the glass from the from the table and then you lift it to your mouth and you drink it that's a very normal gesture everybody knows it so how to deal with this with this uh, initial problem you take up the glass but then you stop uh, in one centimeter from your mouth because you hear something something is going on so there the story starts no um, so I think it's it's all about it's all about this work with the expectation to have an initial problem or an initial proposition one could also say and then work with it and then create expectation and then break expectation and this can be funny or of course it can be also horror <laughs> no yeah yeah that, and this is a, you know oh, sorry yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> you go. just yeah because you just said something very interesting because it can be funny or it can be horror or it can be also very dramatic and not funny at all you know but the the thing the point here and what it makes this situation funny and and the, and the essence of this is that you have to recognize uh, the uh, how to say the mechanic construct, construction behind no that you somehow it has to imitate life but you have to feel that it's there is it has been created but it's mechanic no which is not to um, can, can, do, do you understand you mean you mean you have to recognize, you have to understand it in, in a certain yeah, point? Yeah, but the arti artificiality. Arti yeah, some, artificiality. it's not really artificial, but it, when you say mechanic, when you say that it's create, it, it's not life on itself, but it creates, creates the illusion of life, you know? Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, because then with, uh, there is something that uh, in comedy is interesting, that you have to be somehow detached mm. to the emotions to laugh on things because if you really think that this thing is serious you will not laugh yeah, yeah. On then it. it's painful usually. it's painful and nobody likes to see people falling or no uh, i don't know having accidents or living these kind of situations but then if you recognize the the, the mechanic um yeah, construction you, behind yeah, something yeah, that yeah, really yeah. i know i opposed. understand you, it's, it's the, like the, it's like without life somehow it's not like it's not an imitation of life. But yeah, you, it's not yeah, realistic. It's, an, it's not realistic. Yeah. Like, for instance, yeah. if you have a scene, somebody punches another, yeah, and the other one falls, and then the yeah. first one looks one moment into the audience and maybe um, does something with his shoulders, no? This gesture looks into the audience and makes a funny face or whatever, no? This is something yeah. which, uh, which is not realistic, no? <laughs> this is something... Yeah, where, but... Yeah, but then again, if you recognize the mechanic, mechanics, you say the mechanical mm -hmm. part of mm -hmm. it, like uh, the illusion of life, that you have creating something, you have created something mechanical. It's, uh, and then it's funny. Uh, it's, Maybe uh, this is a good point to, to look at this uh, Larry Griswold, who uh, does something that if it would be real, then it would be incredibly painful. <laughs> what he does you know with the falling uh when he falls from the from the stairs for instance yeah that's a very good example i of course i, I didn't bring it because it does not make sense to listen to it you just need to you need to you need to watch it uh, we are talking now about uh, a scene by larry griswold which maybe which maybe can illustrate what what, what we were talking about uh before because he does uh, very dangerous things and everybody is laughing so much and he's falling uh, off of this construction and everything and one can one should really look at that and we will put it in the sure. the link in the show notes this is the this is the difficult thing about the podcast because we cannot see things we have to we will uh, listen to some things but it's only mm, let's yeah, say that's true. Um, it's a bit tricky a audio me. comedy <laughs> yeah yeah it also brings to mind this 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 strange thing that you know when when one person goes on the stage and uh, wants to speak and and kind of loses it it's funny and when another person goes on the stage and tries to speak and then loses 
it it's incredibly painful and, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know yeah. what? Why does it turn out funny with the one and like incredibly horrifying with the other? And there's something I think with this, you know, real pain or real uh, when you see someone really getting destroyed, it's not funny anymore. But when you can kind of feel that this person is, yeah, they're losing it, but but it's not. Uh, it's real, but it's not like destructive. Yeah, it has to do also a lot with the f the way you accept the failure. Mm -hmm. you know? If you keep, keep trying hard, it becomes very psychological and emotional, and it's not funny anymore. You know? Ah, yeah. and there, 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 I have to jump in because what is the difference between it gets psychological and it's funny? I, 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 uh, you know, when you when you when you when you play, you, you don't think the, the the clown he do he does no. Come on, say how do you say he do he he does uh, mm -hmm. he does and he thinks later huh? after. Yeah, I know, but what is the difference between uh, the, the difference is that it's that uh, uh, you know uh, oh. I think that this has to do a lot of, with the, how you are engaged on, 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 on the situation and on the action. In my case, you now, which I see this, um, the, the comedy and clowning as a very physical, uh, uh, what to say, thing, it's that you have to be there. You have to be in a in real contact with the audience and you have to be also in a real contact with yourself. You have to really know and be aware of where you are living, no? and why you are there. So this is also important to know that you go to the stage to do something, to work. It's not just you don't go to, to expose yourself and your life and your thoughts and your dreams. Somehow, yes, but no, it's something also very practical for me. So you go straight to the point and then you will not miss it. You will fight and work hard to, to achieve what you want to do. You know, I don't know if you if yes. you can f uh, follow or not. This. It has to sometimes. Do, yeah. No. Mm? no go, yeah, go, yeah. Go. 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 No, because sometimes it's very difficult to see somebody who get very excited by the fact that there are five hundred or thousand people looking at you. So you completely forget why you're there. Mm -hmm. no? So you have to focus. You stay focused on your thing. No? Mm. And uh, to to create this. Uh, Relationship with the audience would will fit uh, your work, also. No, so it will help you to go on, and not the other way around. And if you are objective, it's not clear, then you risk very much to to fall and to get lost, and uh, you will start like to judge yourself or to judge the audience, and because you don't really know where you want to take them or where you are going, so to, to place a very uh, 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 an objective. When you go to on the stage is very important. Then you have the big objectives, and then you can place the very little ones. But you now it's like um, you will build up, build up the situation. You have to know what you are creating on that moment, and it's very important. Can you, can you give an example, Gonzalo, from from your own work, like what an ex objective could look like? Uh, okay, so there. Are, you know, my for example, this this um, this um, play, my play, Cheating Gito Paradise. Now we have mm. it's a late almost fifty minutes performance, and it's uh, is the opening of this uh, bar, and it's full of accidents. Okay, so that we know that we want to open that bar. It's very simple. No, it's an opening, so it has to be mm. open. Okay, <laughs> but it takes fifty minutes to to do it. Yeah? But and it's so full of accidents that at the beginning we had some real accidents, and it's amazing that people they don't see the difference. But it's amazing the way you feel it from inside. Yeah? Mm. So it, uh, it was like, and we were like sometimes also lost because we so were like, oh, what we should do now, and we were start talking to each other and so on. And no, it takes like. Very, this like a few seconds 
to take you out of your objective and to not being able to take mm-hmm. it back. So if you have a good dramaturgy, a good uh, structure behind and a, uh, a clear objective, it's much more easy to to come back. Because when you write way. for comedy, yeah. it's not something, it's not like you don't write every second. You need a lot of, you need to leave a lot of space on the, the on your right. uh, structure, a lot. Because on the streets, everything can happen. Anything can happen. Yeah. So on that space, how to fill that space is very important. What to do when there is nothing written. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's the key. And there, when you, then you need to play a lot and you need to gain an experience to, 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 to know how to, how to manage the, uh, that moment. And mm. there is where you can get <laughs> lost every, uh, very easy because you can have mm-hmm. a very good uh, dramaturgy behind. But if you don't leave space, it will be flat because it right. will be with no life, with no f- flow. No? no, you are not taking any risk. And comedy is about to taking risk every every time, all the time. But you have to l- make this risk part of the, your own dramaturgy. So it has to be a very concrete uh, uh, structure. And mm-hmm. I think it's uh, in the, in, this, in this moment where we very often uh, c- comedians they don't think much about and then just go. To prove themselves that they can do anything that they, uh, no without a structure, which is very interesting also to see people improvising. But you really need a good technique to do it, and a lot of experience. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a that's so interesting, Gonzalo. This this uh, relationship between your own objective and the structure, and then the freedom you need to, uh, or that actually with those two you can. Use the freedom that you need to make it alive. This is this is again such a strong link with jazz, where you know also a jazz musician can get lost very easily if you don't have your strong objective. Like if you don't know, in essence, you know you don't have to know the details, but you have to know your objective, and uh, that makes it possible for you to actually navigate the freedom and navigate the situations that arise and make something very alive in that uh, space. Uh, yeah. Very interesting. And the and objectives, I can imagine, can be different for every performer, no? In one... Uh, yeah. In, in comedy, it's, inter- it's important and very ster- interesting that these objectives are very clear, very easy, and very easy to recognize. Mm-hmm. By, An uh, audience should recognize. Audience. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So you can... It's like, pre- a, like, a, yeah, like it's, a jazz tune, which is very simple. <laughs> you know? What do you mean Basically. in this sense with objectives? You mean, for instance, uh, you want to open a bar? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's or the, get yeah. girl. But then, or... then they are... Then, 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 it has to do a lot also with dramaturgy because now, like, I will open a bar, but what? But something will go wrong. In 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 the case of our play, you know? mm-hmm. But what it is the thing that will uh, be like the beginning, like the trigger for the mess? Now it's something very very difficult sometimes to find. And for us, it was like in the case of the Chiringuito Paradise, it was like uh, we have to give a cocktail, uh, our first cocktail, you no. Know? But then we start thinking, okay, but we should take somebody from the audience. Okay, it's good. But then these people from the audience, what is if it's uh, if it's the major of the city of uh, represents uh, the authority? So it makes the pr- the the problem a bit a bit a bit bigger. Mm. So yeah. that it creates the context. So uh, then you start to try to find out how something very simple, how you can uh, make it. Um, uh, uh, what you say, like more, um, more in more, th- more. That's something that creates more tension because more tension, and more more pot- more tension, more potential for yeah for <laughs> accidents exactly. and for comedy. Exactly. You know what we what we yeah. say in tragedy in German. There is something that we call Fallhöhe, which means height of falling. No, 
You know that in the tragedy uh -huh. in some some Germans, of course, the Germans, uh, uh, they when they found these old Greek texts, they started to say, "Oh, yeah, that's the great, the best thing to do." And they said, "Yes, this is the classical plays." And then they started to write the rules. And one of the rules of the tragedy was, of course, that it has to be a noble hero. No, why? Why has it? Why is it a noble hero? Because of the height of falling yeah because when a poor uh, a poor uh, um, farmer uh, kills his wife and is is even poorer and has nothing to eat and whatever and the gods uh, are not in favor of him that's not a tragedy because of course there is no height of falling the the poor farmer was poor before and is poor after poor bastard no no fa no height of falling <laughs> but if it's a noble person so it's very high he has a very good life and if he loses everything that is the story yeah so this is could be it's it's also the same what you what you said now this the 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 the, um, the situation the starting situation is very simple you want to open a bar And then parameter one, no, you want to give the first cocktail. Very simple. But now it starts to build up the tension. Who is the receiver of the cocktail? A very, very important person. So nothing can go, nothing should go wrong. And this creates the tension for, for the comic re relief afterwards, for the, no, that everything falls to pieces. Yeah. And, and and this is this is very important. And something interesting here is that you are creating the bluff. What is uh, the bluff? Bluffing when you are mm. like in poker. What do you bluff? Say? Yeah, the bluff. You are creating this in front of everybody's eyes. <laughs> no, <laughs> you invite you invite the mayor because we invite the mayor, and I, I make a speech, and I make him he make some speech and everything, so everybody knows who that person is not the mayor. But little by little, you start doubting if it's really major or not. And you know that has happened to us twice, that you have, we have picked the real major of the city. By really? accident? Yeah. No. Oh, my uh, God. I don't believe one it. One was <laughs> by accident, and the other one because uh, the, he wanted to be there. <laughs> no? uh, one was by accident. And then I realized that uh, I said, okay, you know, It's not humiliating at all for the fake mayor because if it, no, we are not making fun of him. We are just putting him in very in this very surreal situation because he was very happy to be there. He enjoyed a lot, and we and 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 we could do just that we do with all the mayors. But he was the real one. I was not because at the ones I knew, and the other the second time I didn't know that he was the real mayor. And he say. You know, but I, I know he was the, the 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 mayor of another town, very close to the town we were performing. Okay. And he said, "Yes, but you know, I'm the I'm the I'm the mayor of, of the, the other town." town. <laughs> yes, yeah, of the other town. And and I told him like I told him like, okay, but today you will be the mayor also of this town, you know, because I thought that he was joking. And he said, "Okay, why not?" No, and we start playing with uh, with this, but uh, after at the end of the show, uh, the the programmer, the people, who, person who organized the, the festival, told me, "Do you know that you you took the real mayor of the other town?" I was like, oh, God. <laughs> no. "So, I you thought you know, it was only everything a joke?" Yeah, I thought he was joking. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Because that's he, like that's it's it's. I I believe you, of course, because it happens. You know, one of my teachers of theater said also, if a performance is good and it works good, then it can happen that you talk of a airplane flying and then or of something, and then suddenly you hear from outside of the theater, you hear <laughs> no, you hear in exact that moment, you hear the a airplane coming. Mm -hmm. If the performance is good, then there is these accidents, these, yeah, this, this magic that have, happens, these coincidences. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. And, and this is, you know, to, to, to say that uh, at that moment I realized that what we were creating with this mayor on the stage was real, you know? It was not a parody, it was not a, a caricature, how to say, of a mayor. He was really acting like a real mayor, and this was the funny thing, the fake one, huh? Eh? Like to invite somebody 
and convinced convinced that he is the mayor and we were so proud you now that oh, okay we have the mayor today with us and uh, we are really touched we are honored by his presence and we start r r talking like if it was a real mayor and sometimes how we create the illusion and people start we all believe that the uh, that he is the real mayor and of course when we then the, everything was very we break everything huh? mm. so it, uh, it goes very bad but uh, it's uh, i find it but, yeah i find it very interesting this fact that you that it's important to have a like a setting a setup which is um uh how do you how do you say it in in in, in intelligent terms ah which is intelligible so <laughs> it's it's able for the public for the audience the audience has to be able to read it no to yeah, to read it to very fast it. to believe it yeah. also in the sense that there is a chair empty chair and there is a person coming in so the situation empty chair and person is coming in he is going to sit on that chair or to do something with the chair no where does it go to and then this is the chair Of a, or it's a throne, yeah. It's a throne of a of a kingdom, and so he there is a crown, and so there all these kinds of small details that help you create the situation and the expectation. And uh, the better your the better your 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 communication with the audience in this way, the better you can also break it and you can play with it, no? Yeah, and it's important that you have to stay credible. Because it's the people, if the audience know that it's not real, because there is a bit too much of something, they will not believe in the same way. You will not be able to create the tension, you know. Mm. If you put the crown, it cannot, and you put the, you know, if you make the whole setup for the king, but somehow there is something that has nothing to do, and there's another thing that has nothing to do, and then you start saying, okay, he's not really a king, you know. Mm. So you, so to. Um, Uh, there is, I don't know the word in English, but to détourner, we say it in French, a situation, to make it surreal, to create the absurdity around, it's sometimes not that easy, and you really have to go, uh, no, little by little, trying to find out until what is the limit also. It's very important, yeah. interesting mm. to, mm -hmm. to know the possibilities, but also it's very, it's yeah. very interesting to know the limits. Yeah. It's, Where do we go too far? Yeah, too yeah. far, too far from this. We can also say gravity, no, which holds everything together, in a yeah, which uh, holds yeah. the yeah, yeah. And in comedy, when it's too far, it's too much, and when it's too much, it's not interesting. Yeah, mm. you lose it. Actually, yeah. this gravity and what you say to Gonzalo about how the the absurd solution that the clown comes up with changes the problem so it yeah. basically changes this points of gravity i think that is really beautifully uh you can hear it in the rhythm of uh, uh faulty towers this clip that uh, uh was proposed by you simon i think no no by gonzalo oh by gonzalo because uh maybe maybe we can listen to that Because you can really hear how in the rhythm of his speech he uh, changes through, uh, you know, when you have these beats and then the subdivisions in between and how you use them, they determine kind of how, what kind of character the rhythm has and what possibilities it has. You know, if it's like... Uh, Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, one and a turn, turn, ti a da di ra pa, or shi tu pa, tra ta, shi kuk, tu tra pa ta, ti kuk, tu. It's completely different, right? The the vibe. Yeah. But it's uh, it's it's because of the subdivisions. The beat stays the same. Shu di di pa da di don don di don da da ra ta ta ti ka da. But if I if I go so absurd, that I changed the beat. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that happening? So I I actually shifted the points of gravity. And he does it all the time. And you're yeah. all the time uh, moved. Yeah, you're in, moved. In an absurd direction, rhythmically yeah, in, speaking. Yeah, yeah, absurd. 
you it, it yeah. changes a little bit and you are your attention goes what 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 exactly. what what <laughs> and the drummer actually when he's playing with uh, with John Cleese he's exposing yeah that yeah that we the, we will listen the to this now oh, but, but what you just said is very interesting uh, and and somehow it also reminds how important in comedy is the objective you know, to have this bit yeah exactly this is so good. If you don't to, have a, a clear objective, yeah. you will get lost. Yeah. There's nothing to, to play with. And this is, you know, in jazz sometimes because it got freer and freer and it gets more and more like difficult, but also more and more important that you know your own objective, even if you could not describe it anymore in, you know, I want to open a bar or this is the beat. You know, when you get the free music of uh, of uh, <laughs> Coltrane or, Col or Nat Coleman... It's not that yeah. obvious anymore, but it's there. Yeah, it's yeah. very a great joke. But something They're very important, obvious. also interesting, that it, so it, there's a very the second half, we uh, will talk about the clips the and the rhythm the and listen to a lot of funny things. Yeah. Define the problem, but you also yeah. define so, the, the relationship uh, with the audience, which is the main thing for, uh, for a comedian, for a clown. Exactly, exactly. You're it's in a completely different world define, all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah, it's not only that you have to define to, to give a new meaning to something or to a problem, but you have to define the, this relation. You Musical have to jokes this relation. is in, uh, incredibly interesting for us. You know what is what is so interesting? Maybe uh, I should not forget it for the next for the second half. But but you know, rhythm in itself is rarely funny. Yes, even though it's such an essential element and for we comedy. I'll, I'll look it up. This is interesting because it's like. Look at the mechanics of comedy, I think, yeah. because it's without content. And it's very important sometimes to look beyond the content. Yeah? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm so, also extremely hungry. Um, so I will say you goodbye mm. now. Yeah. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. See you soon. <laughs> See you soon. Very soon. There's a great, there are great Jesus jokes, you know. True. <laughs> well, there's an objective. Speaking of objectives, he had a pretty strong one, you know, save the world yeah. and everyone in it for all of time. Yes. Ah, yeah. You want? I, I will play you this joke. It's I have a recording from from Zizek, from Slavoj Zizek. He's a philosopher. And he likes to t tell jokes. He has a very strange English and he, he, and he talks like this sometimes. Yeah? So it's sometimes a little bit difficult to, to listen, but... But it already sounds funny. Yeah, but listen to this. Listen to this. <laughs> the best respectful religious joke that I heard, maybe you know it from some of my earlier books, was among the Christians of Palestine. So he tells his favorite... Best joke. Best this is Monty Python. <laughs> he tells his his favorite religious joke, yeah, and he heard this joke in the uh, among the Palestinian Christians. He says, mm -hmm. "Very tender jokes that I like about Jesus Christ, like just one not obscene one. I love it. I heard this from a Christian Palestinian." I like this total historical inaccuracy. Uh, Jesus Christ gets tired of his preaching, his preaching, and he takes one of the apostles. Let's take, go to Galilee Sea and close to it, let's play golf. Okay, Christ is playing <laughs> golf there. He makes a hit, misses it, the ball falls into uh, the sea, lake, water. Okay, Christ being Christ, he of course walks there on the water, reaches, uh, comes back. And then the apostle says, but listen, Jesus, this is a very difficult hit. You will probably fail. Even who is your big player, the black guy? Uh, Tiger Woods. Even Tiger Woods wouldn't maybe be able to do it. And Jesus said, <laughs> fuck Tiger, I'm God, I can do it. <laughs> so he hits it again, it goes again into the water. So he walks on the water again, and that I like this total historical confusion. At that point, a group of American tourists come there with a bus and are surprised, like, what is that guy doing walking on water, no? 
and they approach the apostle and says, but who's that jerk guy? What does he think that he is? Jesus Christ. You know what uh, apostle answers? No, it's much worse. He thinks he's Tiger Woods. You <laughs> <laughs> that's so cute <laughs> yeah, that's a great joke okay yeah, that's very funny <laughs> so the second half we will talk about the clips and the rhythm and listen to a lot of funny things Ooh. yeah so yeah, yeah. Uh, I will. I will also uh, look up this uh, because I have a. I have a CD of a uh, from the fifties. This duo, a woman singer and a pianist, and they make their whole career was making musical uh, uh, jokes. Musical jokes. And, uh, is yeah, in incredibly yeah. interesting for 